What's up, fantasy football fans? We are back with the week 10 fantasy football roundup, and we have got two whole leagues to get through, so we're not going to waste any time. There's only a few weeks left of the fantasy football season, so it's very, very, very much important that we try and win every game. Let's get straight into it. And starting off with the Andy Dalton fan club, this week I was playing dad, and it did not go to plan. We lost 106 to 127. It was a rough one and it all started to go wrong very, very early on Thursday Night Football when his quarterback, Lamar Jackson, went out and scored 42 points. I could not imagine many teams that had someone in Thursday Night Football that didn't win this week. With the way that the Jamar Chase, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow and company popped off, I'd be amazed if you had one of them three and you managed to lose. But here we are. As expected. 42 points start you off is always a great spot. But what else happened here? The rest of his team was pretty okay. Uh, Montgomery and Pollard a little bit lower than you'd like. Wide receiving room didn't do a very good job. Tight end did pretty good for this league. Brian Thomas again pretty poor. Tyler Bass 11 points is pretty good. But the Eagles defense with 34 points against Dallas. Absolutely ruined my week as well. 76 points from two of his players just puts you in a position that's pretty difficult to lose from. Um, and he didn't. And then on the flip side, I was left with not a lot, really. Brian Robinson and James Cook are mine for 52, and that's basically it. Sam Darnold, 11 points with three interceptions. Even if he hadn't done any better, but just not thrown them interceptions, he would have been on 17 points, which would have had me on 112 which is just so, so much closer instantly. Um, but yeah, James Cook and Bijan did a good job. Justin Jefferson, on his second week for me, had his worst week of the season, which is just my luck. It is what it is. <laughs> um, Coop Cup looking not too bad at nine points without a score against Miami, which is a poor matchup for him. So pretty happy with that performance from him. And almost I'm kind of glad he didn't have like a 15-point week because it wouldn't have changed anything. Um, Hunt Henry really poor. I cannot buy any luck at tight end in this league. J.K. Dobbins a little low at flex with 9.7, but not, not abhorrent at all. Definitely could have worked with it. McGoughlin got me 7 points at Giga. Not bad. The Lions defense managed 9, which is not bad either. Just the way the cookie crumbles. Geno Smith was on the buy, so I can play him. Baker Mayfield wouldn't have been an upgrade either. So despite Sandard only scoring 11 points, that was the right decision at corner quarterback. But Marvin Harrison could have netted me an extra seven points if I'd played him over Justin Jefferson, which I was never ever going to do, let's be honest. The only realistic thing I would have done with him is had him in instead of J.K. Dobbins, which would have netted me an extra three points. Um, there's no way I win this game. Um, my optimum lineup, I believe, is like 117 or something, which just wouldn't have been enough regardless. It just sucks. Good to see Bijan's doing a good job and James Cook's doing a good job. Hopefully everyone can lock in for these last few weeks to secure me a playoff spot. Next up, we have Scott, who was taking on Fraser. Scott, I believe for the fourth week in a row now, scoring more than 150 points. And once again, Jamar Chase just going nuts. As I said, no one's going to lose with Jamar Chase this week. And point proven. Granted, he would have only lost without Jamar Chase by four points. So the rest of his team wasn't exactly poor. Uh, Jamar Chase was 58. Jalen Hurts was 30. Kareem Hunt and Kyron Williams having probably their worst combination so far of only 23. Um, D-Hop managed six points. George Kittle, 12 points. Kamara, 16 points. Although he did drop a um, walk-in touchdown that would have had him up at about 30 points. So this score could have been a lot, lot higher very easily. Um... Yeah, I mean, when you've got 58 points from your wide receiver, you're in a pretty solid position. And then when the other person doesn't even set their lineup and they've got to run back on a bye week, you're not really going to lose, are you? Um, on Fraser's side, no one was really that bad. If he'd have had Kenneth Walker and we say he got 10 points, that's 112. That's not a bad score. Poor from his kicker. Young Way Koo's had a really poor season. Um so I'm curious to know if he manages to rectify that at any point. Tuba Hubbard absolutely balled out with 29.5. Drake London was pretty good, yeah. Not a bad performance from his team, but he had to score 156 points to win, and that was just not going to happen. Ironically, he left points on his bench for Jonathan Taylor at 19 points. That would have been an upgrade over any running back he actually played. So he could have 
very easily had a much higher score. I'm playing him next week, so let's get some prayers in the comments. Next up, we have Anka versus Skip. Anka has climbed her way up to four and six. She's on the outside looking in of a playoff spot. Now, in fact, after that win with um, the game she's won, she is now in sixth, which I believe is a playoff spot. So, backdoor entry for Anka is very, very possible here. But let's look at how it happened. Josh Allen, 22. Brees Hall, 11. Jameer Gibbs, 15. Everyone's kind of chipped in, and then Austin Eckler had a massive week with 25 points just to um, put the final nail in the coffin, essentially. What went wrong for Skip? CJ Stroud underperformed again. Najee and Tracy did a good job. McLaurin did a good job. Shakir did okay. Travis Kelsey was good. I mean, yeah, it was literally the um, the flex position. If their flexes had scored to save, Ankle would have lost by seven points. So that is the difference maker right there. Was there any points really left on the bench? Yes, there were some points left on the bench for both sides. Notably, the no the Vikings defense and Kirk Cousins would have been an upgrade. Um, as well as the Texans defense would have been an upgrade. And Court and Sutton would have been an upgrade. But other than that, the game kind of went as it should. Next up, the two teams that are shaping up to try and ruin someone's season late in the year is what I thought. But we have a pretty low scoring affair here. 90 plays 92. Let's see exactly what went wrong. Um, so they're both missing at least one player. Two players, it looks like. Kyler Murray, bald. Derek Henry had a poor week by his standards. Christian McCaffrey's back, though, which would be scary for anyone who has to play Tom in the next few weeks. Malik Neighbors had a pretty poor week. Travis Etienne was back and did okay. Not too bad from the winner. What made Ryan close? Connor with 21 points. The Bills with 28 points is genuinely impressive. Very, very impressive. Achan only managing 9 points. That might be his worst ever game when he is starting alongside Tua, which is just crazy. Puka Nakura 11 points after getting ejected last week. Mark Andrews 13 points. These guys, I believe... Barring injury, they're fully back for the rest of the season now. These two are going to knock someone out of playoffs last minute. I'm telling you that now, bookmark it. But other than that, nothing really here. These are just two teams that exist and are going to try and cause problems for people. And to wrap up the Andy Dalton fan club this week, we have got James versus Pash. James manages to win by 14 points to keep the number one spot. He is now 8-2 and two on a one-game winning streak after having lost last week. Um, No. What, what happened here? Joe Burrow, 47 points again. If you have one of them plays, you just don't lose this week. Mixon, Jones did okay. Brown and St. Brown did pretty good. Dalton Kincaid had a poor week. Bigsby had a poor week. McPherson had a poor week. Giants defense did pretty well. On the flip side, Jane Daniels had a poor week, for him especially. Saquon Barkley had a quiet week finally. Rashad White was, I mean, did okay, but nothing insane. Daryl Mooney and George Pickens fought back a fair bit, as well as Trey McBride and Rashad Bateman. Quite be fair, Ben built up McPherson and the Saints defense beat out the Giants. Yeah, realistically, it was the 38-point lead handed to him by Joe Burrow over Jaden Daniels that really um, put this game home. He only won by 14. If Jaden Daniels even had his weekly average of like 20 points, this game would have been a lot, lot closer. Um, was there any big mistakes? No, not really. Technically, Duns and Ertz should have played. That would net an extra two points, but I don't think they were bad decisions. Um, Jared Goff wouldn't have been an upgrade, yeah. This just is what it is. Jared Goff managing to win that game with five interceptions against Houston is diabolical. On the flip side, um, the game wasn't winnable for Pash. But Bo Nix would have got him closer with 18 points. Let's head over to the Ghoulie 12 League. Right, and here we are. This week I was up against Mick, who had been finding some form. But I did manage to win. So we are looking pretty darn good now at 7-3. and three. I believe this puts us in a relatively safe spot to hopefully lock up a playoff spot. But let's go ahead and look at exactly what happened. Um, I had Joe Burrow. Once again, you don't lose if you have Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson and Jamar Chase this week. It just doesn't happen. 
Um, Naj and Bijan combined, so that's 73 points off rip there. And that was basically it. Quinton Johnson did okay. Brian Thomas didn't do much. Hunter Henry didn't do a lot. Travis Etienne was okay. Will Lutz was pretty poor. And the Lions' defense was okay. Fortunately, there was kind of even less on the other side. Travis Kelsey caused me some problems with 20 points. Bucky Irving and Jameer Gibbs were pretty good, but they only kind of minimised the damage of Najee and Bijan. If not for Joe Burrow, I was in big trouble this week because they just, in every area, were just a bit better than me, a bit better at flex, a lot better at tight end, a bit better at wide receiver. But I managed to um, lock it all in with a massive Joe Burrow performance. I don't believe there was really anything left on my bench. Uh, Fry move would have been an upgrade. And Tank Dell would have been an upgrade for an extra 13 points. And Purcell and Wilson were on his bench, which would have got him an extra 12 and 10 for an extra 22. So if either of us would have played our optimum lineup, that would have won us the game. Didn't happen though, and we are very thankful for that. We've got the one seed, I believe, currently. Hopefully we can hold on to that for as long as possible. Next up, Oscar extends his win streak to three. He's now put five and five, like in the making a late dash for the playoffs. And Josh is losing once again with only 79 points this week. Oh boy, what went wrong? Um, It looks like... A little bit of everything, to be honest. Only 10 points from Kirk Cousins. J.K. Dobbins had a poor week. A-Chan had a poor week. Tyreek Kill, better, but not great. Jamal Williams, or Jameis Williams, sorry. Eight points. Trey McBride, 11. Yeah, everyone did a little bit, but no one did a lot. Like, no one broke 15 points, which is always going to be a problem. It just doesn't give you a buff. Whereas, if you look over here, granted, they didn't even break 100 points, but they've got three guys who broke 15 that's a big difference maker instantly. How many people broke 10 points? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. The same amount of people broke 10 points on both teams. But the big difference is then how many people broke 15 or 20. It adds up quickly and it makes that 18 point deficit very obvious. Calvin Ridley with 25 points on the bench. Joel Bateman with 17 points on the bench. Lots of points left on the bench that could have swung this game, basically either way, it seems. But alas, it is what it is. I believe the, the best team was still Oscar this week, but they'll definitely be hoping that their teams can perform a little bit better than the um, stretch of the season to try and lock up a playoff spot. Next up, we've got a high-scoring game here down in the depths. Four and six, five and five. George comes away with a win of 138 points. I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest that he probably has Jamar Chase. Yep, there it is, right there. Jamar Chase, 55 points. It will cure all wounds. Other than that, what's he got? 15 points from his kicker. His running backs did well. His trio of Pollard, Mixon and Taylor combining for 41. Whereas Cook, Hunt and Barkley also managed about 41. Wide receivers was obviously a big swing. Yeah, I mean, with Jamar Chase, I said Chase Young a few times there, I think. Jamar Chase scoring 55 points. <laughs> Even if you take him down to, like, I imagine his average is like 15 points this season. Even if we say his average is 20 points this season, you take 35 off and he's only scored 103 points. His team has not played that well this week. But Jamar Chase come out, dropped three tuddies in 260 yards on the Ravens and secured the dub. You love it when one of your players goes absolutely sicko mode to win the game. And that's exactly what's happened with Jamar Chase. It just so happened it was Thursday night football. I wonder if that was Monday night football and you've gone to bed Sunday night, you're like, oh, or sorry, you've gone to bed Monday and you're like, oh, well, game's over, it's fine. And then you wake up Tuesday morning as a Brit. And you go, oh, I may as well have a look, see how much I got beat by in the end. And you see Jamar Chase has gone fucking absurd to win you the game. Insanity. That game was wasted on Thursday Night Football, I will tell you that, for free. Next up, we had Wag versus Ian in the Loser Bowl. Yeah, that's what we're going to call it, the Loser Bowl. Do we laugh at Wag again this week? Seven game loss streak. Is it getting redundant to laugh at Wag at this point? No, I don't think it is. <laughs> 
Dreadful. 79 points. Would he have beat anyone this week? No, he wouldn't. He would have even lost to Josh, who also scored 79 points by point one. That's how poor Wag is. Sam Darnold, 6 points. Montgomery, 12. Tank Bigsby, point four. Wondell Royal. He had P Pickens scored a quarter of his points. With 20 points. That's dreadful. I don't even know what he can do different. I mean, I wouldn't have played Mason when McCaffrey was back. I'd have found literally anyone else. Granted, he didn't really have anyone else. He could have put Atwell or Hutchinson in, which would have netted him more points. But, yeah, I don't know why he was playing Sam Donald against Jacksonville over Kyler Murray against the Jets either. Some interesting decisions. Um, but Wag plays for the love of the game, but not winning the game, it would seem. Um, Luke, Ian, sorry, got a little lucky. Oh, not even 100 points. Um, Chuba Hubbard did a pretty good job. Mark Andrews did a pretty good job. They really kind of took the team home. Once again, four people on both team broke 10 points. The big difference is one, two people didn't even break a point on Wag's team, whereas like everyone did on Ian's team. And it is, it's only 20 points in it. Which is crazy, because that is just, if he starts Kyler Murray instead of Sam Darnold, he wins and breaks 100 points. But it's a rough one. This was a really poor game, not very high scoring at all. Both teams will be desperate to try and um, find some form down the stretch, see if they can sneak into a player spot. Next up, we have another decent performance here from Luke, who's now on a two-game win streak. Tony falls and is now losing again. What are the points saying? Lamar Jackson lost. Holy hell. Across two leagues and every no one having two of these players. This is the first time that we've seen someone have one of them players lose. Lamar Jackson matched 32 points. And it wasn't enough to secure his team the dub. And that is because all but two of Luke's players broke 10 points. And one, two, three, four of them broke 15. A lot of points. On the flip side, I mean, Bill's defense for 19. So, I mean, uh, he scored 115. It's not a bad score. But Devonta Smith having a uniquely poor week, as well as Ferguson having a poor week, has really, um, really caused some problems here. Luke did a brilliant bit of last minute business to go out and acquire Austin Eckler and TJ Hawkinson in a trade which scored him 33 points and won him the game pretty comfortably. So I imagine he's over the moon with that bit of trading he did. With Brock Bowers being on a... Yeah, if he wouldn't have made that trade, he would have been um, staring down the barrel of a loss here. You've got a feel for um, Tony in this situation because his team did pretty good at 115 points. I mean, what? He'd have beat 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 teams this week. Seven out of twelve teams he'd have beat this, or seven out of the eleven other teams he'd have beat this week, and he's just unfortunately rolled badly and got one of the few teams he'd have lost to. It is rough. It is rough indeed. I'm sure they'll both be relatively happy if their teams are believed to score points, so and they'll be hoping to carry that into next week. And finally, we have Cam and the other Josh, who are about both now six and four after Cam beat Josh in what is not even a two point game. Not even a two-point game. Who are the big difference makers? Who costed? Baker Mayfield had a bad week. That kept it closer. But no one really on Josh's side was massively poor. You'd have hoped for more from Evan McPherson, but not a lot you can really do there. The Giants' defence against Carolina, maybe you'd have hoped for more than four points there. Maybe you could expect more from Swift against New England. But other than that, there's not really loads there. And if you look at the flip side, the points are more scattered. Baker Mayfield didn't even break 10. Rashad White and Tracy had a very good job. Jefferson, 9.8, low for him. Puka Nakua, 18, was pretty damn good. Very up and down and maybe not the players you'd expect to be more reliable. Actually being more reliable. Were there many points left on the bench? 
Courtney Sutton was left on Cam's bench for 19. That would have been a little upgrade. Realistically, you're never going to bench Justin Jefferson. What about Shakir? Shakir would have been an upgrade over Swift, so he could have won the game. But would you have played Shakir against the Colts over Swift against New England? Probably not. I feel like that would have potentially been a bit of an insane thing to do. Definitely, 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 definitely a very close game there. But there we are. That is the end of week 10. It's all taking shape. We're currently in a playoff spot in both leagues. So we want to try and hold on to that. No matter what, I will do these videos in the playoffs as well. See, they'll be shorter. And I do plan on doing a end of seasons awards for both leagues where I give out MVP, coach year, stuff like that. But thank you as always. Make sure you get liked. Make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you in a bit. Peace.